relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass. Well, me and Brad Pitt there, if I was to tell you that my mum says 1.2, you wouldn't know what that means unless I told you that she thinks I am 1.2 times more attractive than Brad Pitt. So 1.2 times more attractive relative to Brad Pitt. And you know what? I worked it out. I am 1.3 times higher than him. So you don't know what I'm talking about unless I say what it's relative to. In this case, Brad Pitt. And it's the same with relative atomic mass. It's a weighted average of the isotopes of the atoms of an element relative to carbon-12. If you don't say carbon-12, then it's wrong. And if you're talking about an individual atom, then you can just say the mass of an atom relative to carbon-12. Well, why carbon-12? So what are our choices? Uh, those are the ones that come before carbon in the periodic table. Hydrogen explodes. Helium doesn't do any chemistry. Lithium goes bang in water. Beryllium gives you cancer. Boron, I've never even seen boron. Well, it's left of carbon then, isn't it? So looking at the periodic table, you can see uh, that the bigger number is the relative atomic mass. And so the weighted average is the one on the periodic table. But we might ask you for the individual atom. And so then you just say it's the, the mass of the atom relative to carbon-12. In this case, it has a mass twice that of carbon-12. So the relative molecular mass, well, that's the sum of all the relative atomic masses in the molecular formula. Or if we're talking about just one molecule, the mass of the molecule relative to carbon-12. Oh, there's my mum's guide dog, or seeing eye dog, for the American viewers. Just a quick note on things you might get confused about. It's all 44 for carbon dioxide. But relative atomic mass has no units. Molar mass is always in grams per mole. And the molecular mass, well, that's just atomic mass units. The IB loves to ask this question in multiple choice.